Welcome to a new vlog. Today we'll be taking a look at this uh, ISDT Q6 Plus. It's a 300 watts battery charger. This was sent to me for free by Banggood.com for the purpose of this uh, review. But I'm not receiving any payment for this uh, review, so it will be my honest opinion. Let's open the box and uh, see how it looks inside. It should be pretty compact. It can charge all the lithium, nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydrate and lead acid batteries. It has a uh, huge input voltage range. It's uh, 7 to 33 volts which is uh, nice. It means you can get power from many possible sources. There is a 150 watt, a uh, 300 watt and a 500 watt version in this series so lots of options depending on uh, how you do your charging and uh, what your needs are the uh, version that I have here costs about $60 with uh, free shipping which is not bad at all considering uh, it's uh, 300 watts worth of uh, charging power so we are greeted with this uh, message, the revolution starts here. We're starting to see more and more of this uh, marketing wank coming out of uh, China. Well, I guess uh, they are following the rest of the world. So let's try to peel off this uh, protection film. This is a real uh, glossy surface. I wonder how uh, long it will take before it will scratch. But I have seen on a Banggood website they also sell um, protection screens for this uh, charger. But it looks uh, very nice. I like how it looks. It's uh, so compact considering uh, the 300 watt rating. I'm guessing they must be using uh, modern components and uh, modern construction techniques so they can get away with 300 watts of charging capability in uh, such a small package. When compared to my uh, old uh, Turnigy charger, uh, this uh, newer one looks like it's come from the future. The only input uh, we get for the user interface is this um, scroll wheel. It feels uh, pretty nice. It has uh, details similar to what you would uh, find on a uh, computer mouse and it's uh, clickable just like the scroll wheel on the mouse. So you can use the click for selecting a um, menu option. On the sides you get this. Um, this is the output port for the battery. This is the input port for the charger. Both are on uh, XT60 connectors and inside the box you get a pair of XT60 connectors with some shrouds and uh, you can use these to build your own um, input cable because on the output you connect your XT60 terminated battery directly to the charger but on the input you might need a, um, a custom cable so they have provided us with two of these uh, XT60 connectors and if you're not familiar with um, XT60 connectors, uh, they're really nice uh, polarized uh, connectors. You can only plug them in the correct orientation and they can carry a lot of current. So that's why they're so widespread in the lithium battery RC world, where uh, usually high currents are involved. We also have this uh, balance port on the side and uh, we can balance up to a six cell lithium battery with this model and on this side we have what looks like a uh, three and a half millimeter uh, jack or at least i believe it's a three and a half millimeter uh, jack this is the firmware update uh, port there is also a cable available on Bang banggood for uh, seven dollars which i suspect is just a usb to serial converter and I'm guessing we have the uh, UART signals uh, present on this connector so I could easily build the DIY version of the cable if needed 
but for seven bucks on the original cable I don't think it's worth the trouble. I've connected power through the uh, input of the charger. Let's see how it uh, looks when it uh, boots. So we are greeted immediately with a menu and it's showing us that uh, no battery is connected. Looks like we can scroll through different parameters. This is our input voltage and it's 15.1 volts precisely powered from the uh, bench supply. It's giving us the um, internal temperature. We have no output voltage right now. I guess this is the number of cells maybe. And by long pressing this button we can get into the uh, menu. But we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. The software is very nice, lots of features, it's modern looking, the UI seems nice, easy to navigate. Yeah, so it even has a self-checking function. So, um, like I mentioned, I don't want to focus on these uh, software features. Uh, there are plenty of uh, reviews on YouTube that focus on the feature side of things. And uh, let me tell you anyway that it will pretty much do all you need it to do. It has uh, it has all the features uh, you could want, but I would like to take a closer look at the electronics inside. So let's take this uh, thing apart and see what they've uh, used under the hood. I'm not seeing any screws on the back. I have looked under one of these uh, rubber feet. So I'm also under the label, there doesn't seem to be any screws. So I'm guessing it's uh, just the screen being held on with clips. So I'm gonna try to get in through this side. And hopefully I don't break it. So after poking at the sides with a spudger, I wasn't able to open it. And I think uh, there are some screws holding it together but they might be under this uh, black plastic cover. So I'm going to try to heat the glass surface with some hot air and then separate this uh, top uh, black plastic cover and I might find some screws underneath. And uh, hopefully I don't break anything in the process. So I guess I was right because I'm seeing a screw right under this black plastic cover. So I'm going to apply a bit more heat just to make it easier to remove. Now we're finally in so we can use a screwdriver on these uh, four screws. I guess it looks nice from the outside to build it like this but it's very hard to get in. Luckily I have opened stuff like this before and uh, I knew where to search for the screws. like the LCD was only held in by the uh, pressure from that uh, top cover. Not sure of the resolution of the screen but it just looks like a um, standard TFT like a 240 by a 320 looks like we have the same serial number on this uh, sticker on the inside now this uh, top cover comes off wow and it looks really nice inside 
really nice PCB, nicely laid out. I didn't expect it to look this good, I must admit. This must be one of the uh, best looking PCB boards I have found in uh, Chinese products in a long time. No screws holding in the PCB, it just uh, comes off. You have a small fan that it's, uh, is branded ISDT, it's quite a powerful fan. And once again on this side, really nice construction. I will just uh, pause momentarily to try and identify some of the components in here. After taking a closer look at this PCB, I can say it's built very nice, good quality and with attention to detail. For example, here is a small piece of uh, heat shrink placed over this aluminum uh, surface mount capacitor to avoid the leads from this uh, second capacitor shorting across the uh, case of the first one. They're not using a uh, great uh, brand of capacitors. I haven't seen this one before, it's HRK. And on this side, it's the same brand. I haven't heard of this brand. Not sure if it's a good uh, brand of capacitor or a crappy brand, but everything else, it uh, looks to be good quality. I mean, look at this uh, nice uh, shielded inductor that we have here. The XT60 connectors are specially designed for uh, PCB mounting. They have um, uh, additional support tabs soldered onto the PCB, so these will not fail uh, too soon. On this uh, other side, we have the um, uh, Cortex M4 microcontroller from uh, Nuvoton. There is nothing special about this uh, particular model. I have checked its datasheet. Uh, I guess it was just cheaper to get it from them. We have a proper uh, mouse wheel uh, design here. The LCD surprisingly uses uh, an LCD connector for the flat flex. It's not just the flat flex soldered onto the PCB like we usually find in uh, cheap products. It seems that we have a very small LDR on this side and uh, I'm not sure if there is an automatic brightness uh, control for the LCD or not. I haven't looked through, the, all, uh, through all the options in the menu yet. All the PCB is nicely uh, laid out and uh, routed. We have uh, nice soldering. Uh, no bodges that I could found uh, so far and uh, if we remove this heatsink we will probably find uh, the uh, resistors and the switching MOSFETs under the heatsink. So let's uh, try to remove the heatsink. And sure enough we have our uh, main switching MOSFETs and uh, the resistors used to dissipate the power when balancing uh, a pack. And this makes sense, there are six of them and we know this charger can do a six cell balance. So each one of these uh, resistors will be switched through one of these uh, small transistor on the corresponding cell to dissipate some of the uh, power and balance the cells between them. As for the MOSFETs, we can see they, they have used uh, uh, very thin packages, the type you would find on computer motherboards. And these are TDM3436 uh, MOSFETs. These are N-channel uh, MOSFETs with a 4 milliohm RDS on. So uh, not exceptionally good, but pretty good for this uh, application. I don't think they need anything better. I mean, if they can get away with cooling with such a small heatsink and the fan, I'm pretty sure that's, uh, that these MOSFETs don't dissipate a lot of power. They have used the thermally conductive uh, silicon pad between the heatsink and the devices. 
and uh, I'm overall I'm I'm impressed with the build quality. I mean, this is the kind of build quality you expect to find in products that sell for $200 or more. Certainly not in a $60 product uh, with free shipping coming and um, uh, designed and made in uh, China. So this is excellent. I like what I'm seeing here. And, uh, this is a trend I'm uh, noticing with products coming from China. They are getting better and better every year. So it will be even harder to compete with uh, such products. I mean, I'm sure you couldn't get something like this designed and made in uh, Europe or maybe the USA uh, for a price anything close to $60. I, I'm pretty sure it will have to be a minimum of double that to be able to sell this and uh, still break even or make a profit. One last thing before I give you my final thoughts on this um, product. I like how the uh, enclosure is designed. So the heatsink rests right in here. Obviously the fins are uh, correctly oriented like this. And the uh, air is uh, pushed out through this side, comes in through this side, goes over the heatsink. And then this is the exhaust where the fan rests. So really nice uh, construction in terms of airflow that's why they, they can get away with such a small heatsink and fan I'm really glad this wasn't a uh, destructive uh, teardown I managed to put it back together everything works uh, nicely because I really like the product and I would like to use it to charge my own um, batteries here is the automatic uh, brightness control working Yeah, really nice uh, features packed into the uh, software of this uh, charger. So if you're in the market for something like this, I uh, highly recommend you get yourself one of these. I'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed. It's uh, excellent build quality and I think it will uh, last me uh, quite a while. As usual, let me know what you think in the uh, comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and I will see you next time.